In your web hosting services like HostMonster, HostGator, Lunar Pages, and so on, you can add and remove files to your server by using this thing called File Transfer Protocol, also known as FTP. Also, with your web hosting accounts, you have some type of control panel that gives you control over things on your server, like, you know, creating databases and email accounts, and loads of other goodies. Not so much the case with Amazon S3. So, we need third-party tools to do some of these things, and there are some fantastic free tools, and some equally, if not slightly better, paid tools. A couple of the paid tools are Cloudberry Explorer Pro, Easy S3, S3 Browser Pro, and Bucket Explorer, and for you Mac lovers, a program called Transmit. Now I'm sure there are others on the market as well, but these are just the ones that come to mind. So my apologies to those not mentioned. But being in the frugal frame of mind that I am, I'm going to show you how to use the free tools instead. In the following videos, you will learn about the basic functions of some of these third-party free tools. First up is one of my favorites called Cloudberry Explorer. Cloudberry Explorer Freeware is a powerful Windows program that helps to manage all aspects of Amazon S3 storage. Cloudberry Explorer is loaded with all kinds of goodies, also known as features, that make this free tool stand head and shoulders above its closest paid-for competitor. This video will cover the installation and an in-depth tour of the features of this cool tool. So let's head on over to the Cloudberry Labs website and have a look. Here we are at cloudberrylabs.com. Actually, it's cloudberrylab.com. Cloudberry's website is what I meant to say now that I got all that out of my mouth. Now, by all means, poke around the site. There's a lot of goodies here. There's much more to this site than just the tool that we're going to be exploring today being the top one here, Cloudberry S3 Explorer Freeware. And so go ahead and check these guys out. We're going to be making a, an additional video series coming up soon on some of these other products that they have too, just to be forewarned. So what you want to do now, of course, you can always watch these videos, but this video that you're watching now should suffice. But let's go ahead and download the product. It's an exec executable file, so you want to install it. Of course, to do that, you've got to download it first, and it's pretty straightforward. Just click on the download link here, follow the bouncing ball, and just like most any other installations, this one is really no different. Very straightforward. Once you've got it installed on your computer, you're going to have a nice little icon on your desktop looking just like this. And once you've got that, you just double click on this to open it up, like so. Of course, you can also right click on it and then left click on open either way. Now, there's an awful lot to this particular software, and I love it. It's great. It's, I mean, there's just so many bells and whistles to it, and of course, you can't beat the price. So, uh, without gushing too much more into this, let me just show you around. Now, right up here under File, oh, first off, you'll notice a little similarity here with what you might be aware of as, a, as an FTP program. This is not, but the similarities are there in that you have two panes, and one represents the desktop, actually. Let me kind of show this off real quick. You can have the desktop on either side because you got the source right here and you hit the drop down arrow, bing, bang, boom, there you go. But on either case, one side you can have the source, that being your computer, the local drive. The other you can have the remote or the uh, internet, the S3 file. And within that S3 file or your computer, local or remote, you've got the path right here and you've got some icons right up in here and as we create a few files here, buckets and whatnot, then these are going to start to light up adding additional functionality to your software. Down at the bottom, this is kind of a transfer queue box, not kind of, that is actually what it is, but this gives you an idea as to what's taking place, whether you are uploading, moving back and forth, downloading, this tells you what's happening and as the items down here are taking place you can either clear them of course these are grayed out right now because there's nothing taking place you can either clear out you can remove completed tasks or you can pause and of course once you click on the pause a resume will take its place so you can click on the resume to you guessed it resume what's taking place and you got the little uh, right down here tells you a little bit about the version that you're working with oh and one other thing too one of the cool things about Cloudberry Explorer that you're not going to find in other software at least at the time of this recording and that is tabbed browsing. You've got the one tab here where you got these two panes open. Another tab here where you've got two more panes open. As just to demonstrate, we can go to my computer on both of these. And this tab here, again, you've got this one right here. You can just continue on down the line. 
and right right here it tells you a little bit about it you know my computer and the my computer to the account that I have right here so well, let's go ahead and take a quick tour here under file you've got Amazon S3 accounts and this shows the current accounts right now for that I have set up here you can add as many accounts as you want at the time of this recording Amazon uh, AWS is not restricting you on the number of accounts you can have as far as I know I've got two set up right now and in the next video I'm going to delete one of these and show you how to get your account from Amazon S3 into Cloudberry so don't worry about that we're going to cover those bases too but this is where you can view the accounts you have established and of course go to create new accounts close that out and under view this is where you can tick on or off your queue transfer down here you can see Boom, it's gone. You know, in case you got a whole bunch of buckets here, you want to see more of them, you just get rid of that Q pane until you get ready to do some transfer. Then you just tick that box once again. Bing, bang, boom. There it is. And you can also adjust the height here, like so. And under Tools is where you're going to find some more functionality here. Under Content and Types, you click on that. If, say, for example, you're, and by the way, most all of this is perfect right out of the box. Default settings are just absolutely perfect. No real reason to have to change these, but they are here for that added flexibility. So if, say for example, you are setting this up for somebody else and you do not want them to have access to this file type or that file type, just select, remove. Select, remove. And if you really screw the pooch here and mess things up, you got the, uh, the reset to defaults button here. So no worries, they got you covered think they made this for people like me anyway you can always edit those two if you feel the need or you can add to them as well again for myself everything right here is fine and dandy as it is no need for me to push the envelope there and again under tools go to options a lot of cool stuff here folks pay attention we got the general right here under the bucket location default I've got it set for US actually this is the way it is out of the box here and if you find that you're in Europe or not in the US and your bucket locations and we'll get into this deeper in an upcoming video but if you find that your bucket locations are more going to be in Europe than in US then you can click this so whenever you're creating your buckets then this will be the default and you can still change it to US but just to let you know this is just a convenience factor and personal preference again you got the other options here you can check into proxy settings if you want to you have the ability to adjust those copy and move or Amazon S3 copy and move under copy and move doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out what we're talking about here you can copy files or you can move files as far as whether or not you want them to be overwritten or not or skipped you got the uh, options here permissions again you can pass on those permissions by default or you can make adjustments here a lot of cool flexibility items here. Amazon S3 copy. This is something that you're only going to find with Cloudberry Explorer that I've been able to find so far. And that is to be able to move files from one S3 account to another S3 account within your Cloudberry Explorer. And typically what happens whenever you can do whenever you do this with other third party tools is that they will download those products kind of behind the scenes to your computer first and then on to the other S3 bucket or S3 location or account that you have and it's a little bit slower as it says and you're going to incur the cost of downloading and uploading whereas with Cloudberry Explorer it is as they say here faster and the all-important four-letter word free because they have the ability to move the information from one account to the other without going to your computer first which makes it faster and of course if you're not having to download and upload that makes it the free so this is something that you're just gonna find with Cloudberry Explorer that I'm aware of anyway so take advantage of this make sure that button is checked and connections you can actually increase the number of attempts whenever there's something that goes wrong something goes a little hokey with your setup here then before it really just totally times out altogether you can make those adjustments here again it's this is in milliseconds so you got four thousand we're talking about four seconds four hundred yeah it's again it's fine and dandy right out of the box but if, if you find the need to limit the bandwidth that Cloudberry Explorer is sucking out of your internet connection so that you can use that additional internet connection speed for something else you have the ability to adjust those here otherwise you just click on unlimited and it's gonna to go to town folks it's pretty darn fast you can click here under diagnostic and logging this will pull up all the info on your computer and 
once you allow it to do so, it will send that information off to Cloudberry Labs to where they can do some poking around and see what ails your system so that they can get it fixed for you. Pretty darn cool, pretty darn quick too. Folks at Cloudberry Labs are awesome. And that's pretty much it insofar as a quick tour of the options section. And under diagnostics, that we just covered that, HTTP headers, and under help, you got the contents here. Oh, and one other thing too, under the check for updates, that's something that under options, right off the bat, if you have this checked, then you don't have to worry about it because the word automatically comes into play there. So if you let me cancel this out here, you come over here to help, and you want to just auto, if you want to manually check for updates, you got the option right there. Head on back to the Cloudberry Lab website right there. And if you love Cloudberry Explorer as much as I do and as much as I think you will, show the love, folks. Send them some feedback and let them know what you think. And of course, you want to check the current version, you can check out the about option here and it will tell you the version or of course you can always look down here in the bottom right corner and it will show you right there. And that folks is a quick tour and a quick lesson on installing Cloudberry Explorer. Now coming up in the next video we're going to go ahead and hook up your Cloudberry Explorer to your Amazon S3 account. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.